An integrated approach is important for the management of patients at risk for osteoporosis and fracture. Exercise that really focuses on balance and gait training should be considered for those at highest risk of falls. Even if my patient has had a fracture, I recommend exercise under a supervised setting because it improves physical function and reduces pain. One of the key changes in our guidelines is the recommendations around calcium and vitamin D. We've lowered the daily calcium intake to 1,200 milligrams per day from both diet and supplements. We've increased the amount of vitamin D individuals should take. For those under 50, I recommend 400 to 1,000 international units of D3 daily, and for those over 50, 800 to 2,000 international units. There are a growing number of therapeutic options available here in Canada. They reduce the risk, in general, of fractures from 30 to 70 percent, dependent on the agent and dependent on the site. We recommend that those who are at high risk of fracture and particularly our patients who have had a hip or spine fracture, consider these additional therapeutic options. For those individuals who are at moderate risk for fracture, having additional factors such as a family history or a wrist fracture, then in those individuals, additional therapy may be warranted. As with all therapies, there are a number of associated risks. Overall, the benefit of these therapies outweigh the adverse effects, especially for our individuals that are at risk for fracture. These risks must be placed in perspective during our discussion with our patients. One of the key messages that we need to share, however, is that fractures can be prevented.